Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name's Soleil and I garden in a zone 5B in mid-Michigan and today it's going to be a high of like 48 degrees and it's partly sunny and the birds are chirping. So I think we finally have spring coming on here and uh, I am so excited though because I have gotten a hellebore haul and I have been looking for hellebores for a while. Hellebores are hard to find. Um, they're not always in like big box stores and we just have a few local nurseries around us and when you do find them they're often very expensive like 25 to 35 dollars um, and I recently heard a friend of mine got some at Trader Joe's for $11.99 and I about died because we don't have one near us but I'd have probably uh, filled up my entire car with them or at least uh, several carts full but I did go to my local Bayonetta nursery and recently picked up two and I did purchase them for $26.99. But then I went on a shopping spree and we went to some Kalamazoo greenhouses, which I showed you in a recent video. And I got these hellebores that are absolutely amazing for $16.99 each. And we later saw them at a different greenhouse for around $32 each. So again, these plants are definitely an investment, but they will last a really, really long time. They are a very long lived perennial. They're super easy to care for and they bring an amazing punch of color at a time of year when we can really use it. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the ones that I got at the local nursery Van Adda's. And so this one right here is called Anna's Red and it is a Lenten Rose. Now there are a couple of different kinds of hellebores that are out there. One of the ones that I have in my front garden is the Helleborus Niger, which is the Christmas Rose. So that one blooms much earlier than all of the others. These will typically bloom for me around February or March. This year has been a much later year because we got spring so late. But just look at the beautiful foliage on these. These have a very nice white mottled foliage and a lovely evergreen structure. And the flowers are just starting on this one. And I'm gonna show you another one that I got because I got a matching one for this um, from the other store that we went to. And these are a beautiful red flower. And you can see the stems are also red on the leaves. So these are absolutely gorgeous. These grow best in part shade and they will tolerate um, they will tolerate full shade and they just require less water at that point and they will tolerate probably a little bit more sun if you give them more water so this tag actually says that it's hardy just from zone six to nine i'm going to take a look at the other one here this one also says zone six to nine. I don't know that that's accurate. I have definitely grown lots of these type of hellebores here. They just emerge a little bit later for me. So um, I'm really excited about this, but this is the Anna's Red right here as well. And this one is much more advanced in its growth. And you can see the stunning flower on it. And this one actually, you can see as the leaves first come out, they start out with a very pretty pinkish red veining on it. And then that's when they turn to a more green and white as they age. Isn't that beautiful? All right, next up, this is the other one that I got at my local Van Adda's nursery. And it is a little bit droopy right now because we had a really cold night last night. And what hellebores do to protect themselves when it gets below freezing, and last night it was about uh, 22 degrees, they will simply bend over and they will fold their flowers down, which helps to protect all of their um, nice little parts. But then by the end of the day, you'll see they will have perked up, usually by midday. And so this one's doing an amazing uh, job of that. This one is called Lenten Rose Frost Kiss Dana's Dolce. And uh, we'll put the names on the screen for you guys. This one is supposed to get 18 inches high by 18 inches wide and is good for part shade. And again, this one says zone six to nine. 
and just look at the flowers on this a little bit more chocolatey of a color very very beautiful though and the stems on this are a little bit more chocolate a little less red as well so kind of a caramely color and then the leaves are absolutely stunning also so this type of hellebore is less hardy than some of the types of hellebores that you can get that are part of the orientalis um, series which are hybrids and they often self-seed so i'm going to show you this one next this one is called paris in pink this is from a honeymoon series of lenten rose and this is from part shade to full shade and this one is um, also more of a hybrid so this one says zones four to nine and you'll notice that the leaves and the structure on this are slightly different so they're more green they're less modeled and they're not quite as wide and large or deep blue so they're a little bit lighter in color and this kind of helps to tell you that they're hardier uh, that's the type that you might be looking for if you're in a colder zone so Paris in pink is a really nice beautiful light pink and white color as it opens up and this one has a couple of blooms on it and again it's a little bit droopy just because of the fact that it um, got so cold last night but then you can see as they age the flowers turn this beautiful limey green isn't that gorgeous okay next up we have this Lenten rose this is Penny's pink and one of the neat things about these new varieties that they're coming out with is that they stand up better and the flowers actually do not nod quite as much so you can actually see them and um, again these are a little bit droopy still because of the cold but really you can actually see the faces of the flowers without having to lift them up and interact with them but i do love the nodding flowers of the hellebore it's something that brings a really strong grace and beauty to them and this one again is penny's pink and it's a lighter pink color it has a little bit of that dolce kind of look to it as well but more pink in it very soft and subtle colors but absolutely gorgeous now some people don't like hellebores because of the fact that they are more of a nodding flower and you can't view them um, directly straight on but they make a gorgeous cut flower to float in a flower bowl take a look at this one isn't that stunning So this one is called Frost Kiss Dorothy's Dawn. And you can tell that this one just has a little bit finer of a light pink on it. The stem is a little bit lighter and has that light pink in it. And look at the foliage on these. So these are again, the ones with the wider leaves with more modeling on them, a little bit of red and pink in them. And so I'm expecting this tag to also say hardy zone six to nine. Now, if you plant these in an area that's more protected and you're in a zone five, you may be just fine with them. I am again, a zone five B. I've been growing hellebores in my garden for quite some time and haven't had problems with them. Now I have not grown as many of these. Um, oh, this one is another Penny's Pink. So I actually got two matching ones. I've got two Anna's Reds and I've got two of the uh, Penny Pink because I really liked both of those. I'm thinking about putting some of them in pots. So the majority of the ones that I have actually planted so far have been the Orientalis hybrids or the ones that I showed you like the um, uh, Pink and Paris one and so i've just had a couple of years of experiencing uh, growing these with the larger leaves and more foliage so i may not have had a heavy enough winter to kill them back but that has been my experience now isn't this one beautiful this one is a much lighter color so easier to see from far away has kind of a limey color to it and the leaves also have that 
uh, on it as well. And this one is called Frost Kiss Moon Dance. And you can tell just because of the lighter color, they're going with the idea of it being the color of the moon. Certainly incredibly beautiful one. I love it. So we'll be finding places for these in the garden as well as in some pots. And the nice thing is that we still have some time to plant them. Hellebores do enjoy being planted while it's still cool out. So they have plenty of times to establish the roots before summer comes. So definitely April, May, even a little bit of June if you're in cooler climates is fine. I would probably stay away from doing it in July or August just because it will probably stress the plant. But you can do that. And they do like a really nice rich garden soil as opposed to it being sandy. So if you have a sandier soil, you're going to want to amend that, add some compost. They love leaf mold. So um, that's part of why they probably grow really well for me because I, I mulch with the leaves every single year in my garden beds and that just seems to keep them really happy. So what we're going to do next is we're going to head out to my front garden where I do have some hellebores and I've potted up some small containers with some potting mix and we're going to go out there and we're going to dig up some of the hellebore seedlings so that we can grow them on and then hopefully plant some more out uh, like around the garden maybe on my back hill in the way back or some other places so let's get going and go do that. So I have a tray of 15 small pots that I can use to pot up these small hellebore seedlings. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this little one right here that is next to a new one I got last year. This one is a wedding party maid of honor. And all of these are the Orientalis variety as I um, spoke about, which are much hardier than uh, the Lenten rose varieties that I just showed you. I actually see we have a little bit of new growth coming up on this one here. You want to make sure to get as much root as possible. And sometimes these can plant themselves fairly deep. But I don't want these plant planted so close to each other. I think I'm getting some roots from the tree. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, these are roots from the tree that are around it. I gotta break them. There we go. There we are. So this has some really good roots on it already. And you can see the new growth coming up in the middle. This is all just one plant. So I want to show you what seedlings look like the first year they come up. So these are all hellebore seedlings in here and I'm going to cover them back up with the leaves. But these are very much first year seedlings that are from last year's seeds. We'll let those grow on quite a bit more before I harvest them. And these will all come up in different varieties. You never know exactly what you're going to get and that's kind of the fun part. So we'll just kind of cover those up for a little bit and wait for them to grow on more. The small one back here that I see. And again, you really want to make sure you get down deep because they do go way down in there. So we have another one right here. Some of these are even hard to see, but they start to get their three leaves. And that's when I think it's a good time to harvest them. So these are all second year, second year seedlings. And these might be kind of hard to get at because of the fact that we have this tree here. And we're going to do our best. There we go. This actually is probably a clump of hellebore seedlings. So it may be a little bit of a challenge to get out. 
But that's the thing. There's so many of them when they when they uh, self seed that they often do grow in clumps. Okay, this one's a really nice small one. And then I'm going to leave a couple of, uh, a couple of seedlings to stay right in this spot. But I do think we have probably three hellebores right here. Oh, it's two. Yep, so we'll just separate them. Pot those up separate. Here's another one. There really are just so many of them in here, you guys. But it is also important to get them out because they will grow to be a full plant. So even if you don't grow them on, you do want to definitely Make sure to dig them up. This actually is probably several plants. See all of those? That's four plants right there. So right here in this clump we have six. Okay, this also appears to be a pretty big clump over here, so we're gonna try to dig this one up. Because there's one right behind it, I'm gonna leave that one. We're going to get these potted up now in these little trays. Okay, you really want to make sure that you have these all separated because they can be as small as just one little single root uh, with one little leaf. And we're probably going to have more than 15 of these, but that's okay. Uh, I'm just going to plant up 15 right now and I probably have some other uh, trays that I can put them in. So we'll get, we'll get this one full and then I'll find some more trays and do some more potting after this. But they definitely want to make sure that they like a little bit of moisture all of the time. So you do not want to let these dry out. One of the things um, that can be good is to add just some regular garden soil besides just this potting mix. So I'm pushing it down really well against the roots, but I'm probably going to get some compost uh, in addition to this to add in just to help hold the moisture and because they really do love all of that organic material that's that's what they thrive on. Now hellebores produce a really significant root system and they are once established very drought tolerant so that's something that is great about these plants as well. They can grow in places that a lot of other plants just don't thrive. I can give some of these away to friends and family because they really do take a long time to grow on. Any of you who, who grow them or have uh, tried to buy them know that they're super expensive and that's because it does take quite a few years for them to get to the point where they're healthy enough and strong enough to grow on. I'm actually going to take this leaf off because it has some black spotting on it so I'm just going to take that off before I put it in the pot. And these probably will outgrow these pots really quickly in terms of the amount of root that they have. And I'll probably pot them up into something larger in the summertime. But right now I'm just trying to get them out of the ground. And situated.
Okay, let's head on over to the compost bin and we're gonna put some compost over the top of this if it's unfrozen, fingers crossed. This compost has lots of organic material on it and is definitely gonna make these plants much happier. Then if I just leave them in this potting soil All that's left now is just to water this in. So what I'll do is I'll actually get some water from the tap to ensure that it's fairly warm, not freezing cold, because the water that's coming out of our hose right now is really, really freezing. And I don't want to like shock the roots, even though they've been in cold soil, it hasn't been that cold. You can see how much heavier the compost is than the potting mix. And this is actually a really good thing for hellebores. I mean, they're not super into clay soil or anything, but this heavier compost is gonna make them much happier. I'm just gonna make sure they all have plenty of water so those roots didn't get dried out. Then we're gonna put this in a spot in the partial shade because you can see we have some brand new leaves that we have exposed that were under, you know, some of those leaves that were in that garden bed that I don't want to burn off today. So we're gonna put them in the shade and let them grow on. Thanks everybody for joining me today. I hope you learned a little bit about hellebores, the different kinds that there are, and some of the beautiful ones that are coming out now. There's definitely a lot of different variety. And again, if you have a colder garden, definitely stick with the Orientalis, which are a little bit hardier than the uh, new ones that come out sometimes. Uh, but you can find all sorts of them and there's just a variety on the internet. So Google away, search away, and have fun. We'll see you next time. Bye.